Hello and welcome to Cloud Tech Talks. This is Pritesh. I'm back with another video. First of all, I would like to apologize to all of my viewers and subscribers because I haven't been able to post videos in the past few months. I feel bad, but uh, been busy at work. Uh, but no excuse. I'm back now. Uh, I will be posting at least one video every week. So stay tuned because I've prepped myself up for a lot of new content, a lot of new subjects, uh, and hopefully all of that helps you uh, during the course of the next few weeks and months. Uh, so let's. Get straight into it. In today's video, I'm going to talk about what is the concept of uh, DevOps and cloud native. Uh, these, be, these have been buzzwords for a few years now. I think uh, back in 2013, 14 is when it first all started off uh, as far as the new approach to uh, development and operations is concerned. But uh, I just wanted to start from ground zero uh, for anybody who's new out there and just wanted to let you understand what is the true nature of uh, uh, you know Dev, devops and cloud native what it really means where it originated etc uh, so i've taken the liberty to uh, whiteboard a few things so hopefully uh, you find it more interactive as opposed to just me uh, talking in front of the screen uh, so the first thing that i want to talk about is uh, the origin, uh, the origin of devops right so as the name suggests um, uh, there is uh, development which is where the dev comes from and there is operations where is the where which is where the ops comes from now uh, between um, uh, as as far as a legacy is concerned between these two uh, sort of functions in a company right uh, there was always uh, a brick wall uh, because of the fact that uh, this used to be managed by different people uh, all the time initially so uh, think about uh, you know the the early uh, 90s early 2000s when uh, development and uh, application uh, business generally was becoming mainstream and people did not have the uh, uh, knowledge on how to manage the process of uh, development and application as as is, as it exists today so on one side there were the development folks where uh, they were in charge of uh, developing the code uh, and their job essentially was only to make sure that they write the code in a manner which is which is most suitable for the application to run regardless of where it's running right so the best possible thing available for uh, a, a, a software uh, is where uh, the DevOps person, uh, the dev person specifically used to sit. On the other hand though, there was the operations person uh, who was uh, more or less uh, responsible for the day-to-day -day, uh, running of these uh, applications, but they had no idea what the code was, uh, what it needed to run. So typically what the dev person used to do is prepare the code and every single uh, new update that used to come out, right? So let's say it's version 1, 2, uh, 2.1, 2.2, then 3, 3.1, 3.2, all of these versions, there was always a new patch coming in and these used to change very dynamically every time this happens there has to be a change in the infrastructure that hosts the development as well right so the development uh, folks usually used to throw around the requirements on this side and then these people they used to uh, struggle with uh, you know keeping the uh, cost down as well as making sure that the developer developers get what whatever they need as far as the infrastructure is concerned so usually it used to create these barriers and uh, it there was always a rift between who does what right because the ops person can easily say i i just uh, deployed the application on this infrastructure it's supposed to run on this infrastructure but uh, these guys can say no we specifically pointed out that you need xyz in order to make the new version work right so that's that's where all of this challenge really originated and really began so as a result of this uh, the the whole uh, process essentially led to the inception of uh, devops as a function so uh, in very simple terms uh, what happened is uh, there was a uh, a virtual uh, merging of these two roles uh, and that's where uh, the DevOps role, uh, as we know, exists today, came into effect. Uh, now, as a result, it was not only about the role coming into effect, it was not only about the person taking charge as a new DevOps individual, no. Uh, it was also about uh, a change in process of, uh, you know, how, how we go about the whole uh, process of development and fundamentally change the way we think. Because there used to be 
a, a simple sort of monolithic leg legacy way of creating an app and hosting that on a specific kind of infrastructure where they used to be let's say uh, a server uh, which is usually be a bare metal or any any kind of hardware uh, right uh, so can can this be uh, the state forever for an application because we went from bare metal let's say to virtual machines and then from virtual we let's say went to containers and dynamically the whole process of infrastructure management also changed right so uh, what happened as a result was there was a change required in the way that people thought of developing applications in the first place and how they implemented applications as well right so uh, the idea essentially uh, you know came into existence here and then they sort of went into the create stage uh, or the code stage rather so code is where uh, is where the application uh, it basically came to life uh, uh, and, and the concept was put essentially on a software uh, once it was put into software uh, it then went from uh, being just a code to being uh, you know essentially a, a full blown um, uh, application which serves a purpose so that's where the build um, uh, you know thing came about and a, a code was then built into a specific software uh, in order to do a job now just just building was not enough you had to make sure that you had to deploy it uh, in a specific way shape and form in order for it to be best utilized by uh, people who it's meant to be used for right so could be a customer could be an internal app for the company etc so the build essentially went on to deploy and deployment is where you you take that code and whatever is packaged in that uh, in that code as a software right you take take both of these steps essentially and you deploy it on a specific uh, instance it could be a uh, it could be a specific hardware a specific private cloud public cloud or any sort of infrastructure which essentially hosts uh, you know that uh, that uh, uh, build phase uh, as far as the deployment is concerned so that's where the deployment happened and then uh, they thought of it as as you know making sure that deployment alone is not enough you have to make sure that you monitor what's going on because during the course of those challenges that i explained to you on you know with the wall in between there was no real way to measure what's going on right why is there no communication why is there no feedback being provided in order to improve on a regular basis so it, it never really stopped there you know people had to make sure that they monitor so that's where the the monitoring aspect came into play and after the deployment the monitoring became like a given and it became like a a thing which was which had to be taken for granted that this has to be there in order for you to know whether whatever you have created is working well or not and then last but not the least the learn aspect came into play and the learn is where of all, all the things that, that you've done and you've monitored can you learn from it and go back sort of from learn to stage 1 and do this all over again so what what it led to is is led to is basically uh, this infinite loop of things uh, where it looks more like this so uh, that's where uh, you know this process of uh, devops was put into uh, into this infinite loop and this is what people call today as ci and cd so continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment is what it's what it's called so basic essentially all of these steps uh, whether it's the idea the code uh, the build uh, the deploy the monitoring and the learning it all became part of this uh, infinite process so essentially you think of it as as this loop being established in this manner and all of these steps uh, you know taking shape in this way so that on a regular level you can just continue to integrate continue to deploy the best version of your application and your idea can come into existence essentially making sure that the approach of devops does justice to whatever application uh, you are you are planning to deploy so on a high level this is what devops uh, and the approach of cloud native is all about please feel free to uh, write in the comments as to uh, what your questions are if if you think i've missed out on anything i just wanted to wanted this one to be a very basic introduction uh, but rest assured, I will touch on a few related subjects in the following uh, videos when I uh, when I create them, 
and um, uh, hopefully uh, you uh, continue to appreciate the work that I'm doing. Thank you so much and uh, uh, until next time this is Pritesh signing off from Cloud Tech Talks. Thank you.